Hi, I'm Lee. And I'm Ed, and this is Lead Follow. Today, we're going to give you a short introduction into our cars. is my 2010 Nissan 370Z and I love it. I bought this car about 10 months ago. Um, I needed to get back into a Nissan because I made the mistake of selling my last 370Z and getting a Porsche. Now I did consider going back to 350Z but the 70 is shorter, a uh, shorter wheelbase, a bit wider, which can be an issue, um, especially around sort of country lanes like this one. And it weighs less, which is surprising. They use lots of aluminium in the doors, the bonnets, the subframes, suspension arms. It's a 100 kilo lighter. It's also got more power out of the battery and apparently had 326 horsepower. I think they're being a bit generous, but 326 horsepower, about 270 pounds per tour. This one has got a bit more horsepower now, it's running 338.2. Uh, that point two is obviously very important. The 370Z also has a much better interior than the 350Z. It's sort of decent climate control, decent audio system inbuilt sat nav and all of that which can date cars but i think this is holding up pretty well it's all touch screen it's quite a nice quite a nice place to be um i don't like the seating position with the stock seats that much which is why i have got this cobra cobra bucket seat behind me the stock seat is giving me a bit of backache um that could just be me because i'm old This car is not excessively modified, I'd say it's quite nicely modified. Uh, engine wise, it has an oil cooler, which is essential if you're going to do any sort of track work. These do like to get a bit hot. Luckily, you've got the gauge from the factory for the oil temperature, so you can keep an eye on that. It also has a Grenny sump, same sort of thing, it holds about a litre more oil. Uh, means that the car can maintain that oil temperature a bit easier. The only other real engine mods it has, it has a Cobra white pipe, Cobra high flow caps and BMC dropping filters. Chassis wise, it has a few more toys on it. It has Bilstein B16 coilovers, adjustable suspension arms, um, front and rear, a whole load of them. So the, the alignment has been able to get completely dialed in and it just handles and drives beautifully now. This with white line anti-roll bars mean that it just... Oh, I just love it. So to help it stop, the factory it comes with four port Akabonos on the front, two, two port Akabonos on the rear. They're 355 and 300 mil discs um, vented obviously because it's not the 70s anymore and they are amazing I run different sets of pads and this depending on what I am doing so at the moment I've just got some Brembo fast road pads but when I'm on track I've got like, EPC RP1s for uh, obviously I've got some stainless steel lines and also I'm running Brem uh, Motul RBF 660 brake fluid in it so I don't tend to have any issues with overheating on track. Most cars I get, I change your wheels is one of the first things, but 
the 19 inch rays that come on this car I think are one of the best looking car wheels to ever come stock on a car and I love them. They have got 20 mil spaces all around just to make them look mildly more aggressive but none of this pokey seat boy stuff. Fusion plan for it, I would like to get a front lip, you know, they kind of need them, just get a bit more aggressive in the front end, um, so maybe some side skirts and extensions, but nothing too crazy. Um, I do think the 2016 facelift is a big improvement on these, and also the Nismo kit is a very nice addition to them. These cars do have a few downsides, um, one of the big ones is the MPG. So, apparently they can get 23.2, which is about the same, well, the most I've ever got out of this. Um, and it's, it's not great. I could get nearly 30, well, a bit over 30 on my 350Z. But you've got a lot more performance out of this. Um, so, it's one of those things you've got to live with. Other things I don't like, as I said, is uh, driver's seat. That I've never got comfortable in, and the steering wheel not sort of being able to move in and out, which on a car like this it should be able to. Despite all of that, I do think that this is, especially for the money, one of the best rear wheel drive coupes you can buy at the moment. You can pick these up at the moment for about eight thousand pounds, which is just an absolute steal. Um, and you know, if you compare it to like Lee's GT86, so second hand, good one, well, an okay one is going to cost you 12, 13,000 pounds. And these have much more performance, much better toys, and are just amazing, beautiful looking cars. So, yeah, that is why I think. Nissan 370Z is one of the best coupes you can buy today. Rubbish! What you want is a GT86. The product of a match-up made in heaven. Super and Toyota joined together to make a lightweight rear-wheel drive sports car with an LSD and a choice of two six-speed gearboxes. With 200 horsepower N8, the car had plenty of go. Although, a lot of people say that they're weak and underpowered. That doesn't make any sense to me. The closest rival to the GT86 BRZ is the 2 litre MX-5, which has less power and is only slightly lighter. And let's not forget, Honda for many years before they went turbo were churning out 200 horsepower NA Type R cars like the Civic and the Integra. Yet nobody ever said they were slow or the MX-5 was slow. What is it that gets people on the BRZ and GT86 so much? In 2015, Cosworth decided to take pity on the little BRZ and GT86 ponies. They decided to inject them with some steroids and turn them into some stallions. Cosworth offered tuning options. You take your car to a Cosworth authorised installer and they start tuning it firstly to stage one, which is an NA tune, taking the car from 200 horsepower up to 230 horsepower. Nice. And then if you really were flash with the cash, you can move on up to stage two, which adds a supercharger. This now takes horsepower from 230 on upwards to 300 horsepower. So welcome to my Cosworth GT86 stage two supercharged car with Dino proven 302 horsepower. And an additional option that was ticked on my car, the gigantic AP Racing brakes from the Subaru Impreza SC400. So now the car has so much extra torque and power, it really pushes you into these fantastic factory seats. And then the brakes, they have the pleasure of trying to remove you from those seats. It just feels like a normal GT86. There's just a lot more noise, a lot more go, and a lot more stop. Like Spinal Tap, everything is just dialed up to 11. All this extra go must come at a price. And it does. And it's a big one. If you'd bought one of these cars, brand new in 2015, and 
taken it straight to Cosworth and said to them, please throw everything you've got at it, you'd be coming out with a total bill for your car of £45,000. And a lot of people say to me, Christ, you could have bought a GR Super for that. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, GR Super start at 48, but yeah, I'm well on the way there. So why didn't I buy a GR Super? Why did I decide to buy a used GT86 and then throw its same value again at it in tuning parts? Well, number one, GT86 is a lot lighter and it's a much better handling car. I drove the new Supra, it's a fine machine. It's just not as good. You can add more horsepower to a lightweight car, make it better, but try to take weight out of an already heavy car, really difficult. Number two, maintenance. It's just a two litre engine. Even with the supercharger, I take it into my local Toyota main dealer. They don't care, they do an oil change, it's fine. Supra, on the other hand, well, it's more expensive to service because the Toyota technicians have to learn all about the BMW side of life. And then also, everything's just more expensive. Road tax is more expensive, insurance is more expensive. It's just cheap and cheerful. It's really quite affordable. And with that money saved, I can spend it on track days. Number three, I hate to say it, and I'm not baiting the Supra people. I mean, I'm a Supra person. I've had a Mark II and I've had three Mark III's. But Supra is made out of German parts by Austrians in an Austrian factory. Does that make it a Japanese car? This is built by Japanese people out of Japanese parts in a Japanese factory. Okay, and the last thing is the Cosworth badge. I'm afraid I'm a magpie. I, I love the shiny stuff. And I'm a kid in the 80s. I grew up idolizing the Mercedes 190E Cosworth. I loved all the Ford Cosworths. God, I'd love an Escort Cosworth so much. The thing with the Cosworth badge is it has history. It has pedigree. It stands for something. I mean, it's worth its weight in gold. Sound-wise, that supercharger, it raises the bass idle, and there's just more air flowing through the exhaust all the time. So it's slightly louder than usual. And you've got a subtle hint of the whine of the supercharger. But if you were imagining it to sound like a Dodge Hellcat on full chat, no, it's, you don't hear the supercharger like that. I mean, some people might find the lack of supercharger wine to be a bit disappointing. I mean, I quite like it. I think it hides the fact that it's boosted. So what you end up with is a 1200 kilo car with 300 horsepower, gigantic brakes, and fantastic handling. What's not to like? So a GT86 is better than a 370Z? Yes. A stock GT86 is better than a stock 370Z? Uh, no. So your argument is stupid? Uh, yes, it would appear so. Anyway, this has been Lead Follow. I'm Ed. That's Lee. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. You didn't say goodbye. Anymore. Oh, I didn't say goodbye. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna cut, I can cut it. Yeah, okay. I can say goodbye, yeah. I cut and I say goodbye. Yeah. I've just said goodbye like five times. Yeah.